All right, now we're getting to the really interesting stuff, brokers. So a Kafka cluster is composed of multiple servers and these servers are called brokers because they serve and receive data. Each broker can be identified with its ID, which is an integer. So one, two, three, four, and so on. Each broker contains certain topic partitions. We'll see that. And after you connect to any broker, just one, which is called a bootstrap broker, but they're all bootstraps, you'll be connected to the entire cluster. And that's what makes Kafka so powerful. You can just connect to one broker and if there are 20 brokers in your cluster, that's fine. You'll be connected to the entire cluster. A good number of brokers you get started with in Kafka is three. But some big clusters for some really big companies have over 100 brokers. And that just shows you how much Kafka can scale horizontally. So now it's going to be quite visual because I really want you to understand what brokers are and what they contain. So let's take an example where we have two topics, three brokers. And so for these two topics, the first one has three partitions and the second one has two partition. So the first topic, topic one, it's in orange. The partition zero is on broker one, the partition two is on broker two, and the partition one is on broker three. And as you can see, the data is spread between three different brokers. And the second topic has two partitions. It's the yellow topic. And as you can see, broker one has the partition one for topic two, and broker two has the partition zero for topic two. And as you can notice, broker three doesn't have any topic two data because there are only two partitions and you have three brokers. So just look again at that graph. It's really important to understand that not every broker has every topic and actually data is spread out. So if you're interested in a data in partition two of topic one, you'll have to go and see broker two. So the cool stuff that I, that I told you before is that if you connect to broker one, you'll be connected also to broker two and broker three. And then if you start asking for topic two, for example, Kafka will directly know that you have to talk to broker one and two. So you don't have to worry about that. But you need to understand how data is placed on your brokers. Now let's talk about topic replication factor. So topics, they're fine, just the way we showed you. But usually, they should have a replication factor greater than one. So usually between two and three. This way, if a broker will crash, for example, Another broker can still serve the data. So let's take an example to understand what happens. So same, same diagram. We have one topic and it has two partitions and the replication factor for that topic is two. So the first partition is partition zero and that's the bold orange. And the second partition is partition one and that's the very light orange. So as you can see, partition zero of topic one is on broker one and two. And partition one is on broker two and three. So as you see, each partition has two replicas across the whole cluster. And that's where the replication factor comes from. Okay, so as we can see, like all the, all the arrows, that shows the data being replicated. So now let's consider something. We lose broker two. It goes down, it crashes, the, the, the server's gone. That's fine because we had a replication factor of two. The result is that broker one and three, well, they can still serve the data. Look at this. We have partition zero and partition one. So the idea is that as soon as you have a replication, you can lose one broker if, if the replication factor is two and you can still serve the whole data sets. So that's really important, really, really important that you set a, repli a replication factor of at least two, at least. Usually three is, is the optimal number. So now let's talk about leader, the concept of leader for a partition. And it's really important again. At any time in your cluster, only one broker can be a leader for a given partition. And only that leader can receive and send data. That's it. All the other brokers, all the other replicas, they're just here for synchronizing the data, for copying what's going on in the leader, okay? So for example, 
in this in this graph right here where there's a star it's a leader and when there's no star it's a replica so basically the the the, the naming convention is that there's a leader for each topic partition and then there is ISR which means in sync replica for the replicas in sync means it's copying really fast from the leader and it's not too far behind. So as you can see in this uh, graph right here, broker one is the leader for partition zero and broker two is the leader for partition one. And then the other replicas are just ISRs. Yeah, so that's it for replications and brokers. It's really important to understand that Kafka is a distributed system and therefore you need to understand how the data is distributed and how Kafka serves you the data to really understand how to use Kafka. So if these concepts were a little bit tough, feel free to revisit the, the lessons and I promise you as the course goes by, it'll make all sense to you. Thanks for watching.